You probably started 3D modeling by making a donut, an anvil or maybe a chair and started following several other tutorials on YouTube. Now, you don't want to count on someone to guide you through the process anymore and you want to start making your own projects to improve your 3D modeling skills on your own. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some techniques and concepts that I hope can help you become at least a better 3D modeler. One of the most important parts of the modeling process, which is unfortunately an often overlooked aspect, is using reference images. You can say that the final result will depend on the effort you put into building your set of references. Knowing how to find the right images is also very important, because you could just simply type in Google Images the name of the object you want to model and that's it. But the problem with that is that you often only find one angle of the specific object. That's why it is always better to find good websites that can provide you with multiple images of the same model, so that if you need more references, you know where to go. There are also great software like PureRef that allow you to put and organize your references in a way that makes them easy to reach and navigate through while modeling. Here is a render as an example of what you can achieve by following real life references. This rocket launch scene is a result of 5 chapters training by an experienced 3D artist and I suggest you take a look at it. He will go through every step of the process of how to create this scene for modeling the rocket station with all its parts such as the rocket base fences, columns, tanks, and so on. After that, you'll go through a quick texturing chapter in addition to simply animating the rocket that only will take few minutes. And the most important part of this training is mastering fire and smoke simulations all the way to rendering the final result. If you are interested, you will find the necessary link in the description. If you want to work on a 3D environment, whether it be an interior design or an outdoor landscape, you have to figure out how to visualize the most important elements of your scene as quickly as possible to plan ahead for the desired result. This process is called blockout, and it is a very important skill for any artist to learn. You can do this starting by laying primitive objects such as cones, cylinders and boxes that can represent the detail meshes that are coming to replace them after the modeling part. You want to create the most of your scene as fast as possible. After that, you can add basic colors to your blocks to better understand what you are seeing. You can also tweak the camera settings and disposition, and finally add lighting in addition to the needed adjustments for the shadows. To be honest, blocking out your scenes and models is one of the best practices for beginners and professionals alike, so it is always better to use it. When your scene starts to include more and more elements and starts getting more complex, or when you are baking normal maps for example, your workspace needs to be organized. Not only does it make the task easier, but it also cuts down on wasted time. This time can be wasted on looking for objects or files. So a good naming convention and a clear hierarchy of assets in the scene would save you a lot of time and energy for a good 3D modeler. A clean topology of a 3D object needs a mesh without triangles or angles. Only evenly spaced quads with continuous edge flow are welcome. It is usually advisable to keep the topology as clean as possible, because it makes kind of the UV wrapping process much easier later on. It doesn't mean that triangles and angles are not allowed to be used, but in 3D software, these types of polygons are not good when it comes to deforming an object, for example for animation or just in the modeling process. There are multiple videos for solutions for different types of bad topology on YouTube that can be used for checking out if what you're doing is good and maybe to improve your skills. UV unwrapping comes up when you need to texture your object in a very specific way and accurately. It is the process of unfolding a 3D object so you can apply a 2D texture to it that fits the mesh. One basic tip is to use a UV grid on whatever you are UV unwrapping. That way, you can quickly check if there is any stretching in the texture and fix it right away by adding more seams and you can do this in the right places to avoid visible cuts. Mastering the UVs would open doors to creating more detailed objects, either for stylized or realistic renders. Sometimes when it comes to modeling organic objects, like characters or some objects of nature, the best approach is to adopt the sculpting plus three topology workflow. You just start by sculpting your object in detail, which is more intuitive than the classic way of modeling in the edit mode, preferably using a graphic tablet. Because the sculpting process results in a very high poly model, we need to proceed next by working on retopology, either by doing it manually, 
creating every phase one by one, which can be very tedious to be honest, or by using one of the multiple add-ons I presented in one of the dedicated videos. And this can help you a lot throughout all the process of pre-topology. Being able to challenge yourself is one of the keys to improving your skills in any field, and 3D modeling is no exception to the rule. This is why you should never hesitate if you have any idea or a project you want to execute, especially if it is something new or something that requires a higher level of skill. This applies whether it be short animation, a physics simulation, or just character modeling. You just need to start the project, and when you face any challenging problems, there are millions of tutorials out there and a large community of 3D artists that can help you at any moment. This one is big. Consistency is the difference between failure and success. No matter how slowly you improve, as long as you don't stop, it's gonna be a good thing. You can set a daily or weekly routine and try to model any object you can see in the daily life. It could be a bottle, a mouse, or just a keyboard for example. In every object you try to model, as simple as it seems to be, you will find a challenging part of it, and solving it will help you learn a lot. Just start simple and keep learning without giving up. As a 3D generalist, you can do a bit of everything which is great, but being a 3D specialist and focusing on only one thing can help you become really good and help you stand out from the crowd. I could make an entire video talking about the different fields that you can specialize in as a 3D artist, but here are some of the most important ones that you can think about. A character artist is specializing in creating 3D models of characters for video games and movies. An environment artist is someone who specializes in creating indoor and outdoor settings, such as creating levels for video games and creating cool environments for VFX sets. Also there are asset artists who create a large variety of elements within video games like weapons, vehicles, simple props and so on. Also I want to tell you that comparison is the thief of joy. One important key to staying consistent in your work is to never compare your work to other people especially the ones you can find in ArtStation, for example, or social media. Not only you are seeing the top 1% of talented and experienced artists in the whole world, but what you are not seeing is how much they spent to create it and the years spent honing their craft. Once you start comparing your work, you will begin to hate it, which leads to losing motivation to work and then giving up, which is not what we want here. Also, you can show your work to everyone, especially artists in the 3D community. You can share your pieces on Instagram, Facebook pages, ArtStation or 3D community websites. Everyone can be useful, either by leaving their thoughts or giving you constructive feedback or criticism. The thing is, when we spend several hours on our work, its flaws often become invisible to us. That's why Fresh Eyes' feedback is such a strong way to find the weak spots effectively and taking count of them will improve your work drastically. 3D actually needs to become a passion and a hobby in your daily life, as natural as opening a book and reading it. Make a habit of opening software even if you don't feel like it or you don't have anything in particular to work on. It often leads to the best of your masterpieces. I'm giving you this advice because this is what I usually do. Often when I take a break from work and I have nothing to do, I directly jump into my software and play around with some cool stuff. It helps a lot building the muscle memory and being more efficient and working faster by getting used to shortcuts and some techniques. I hope you found these tips and techniques useful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.